Hello everyone and welcome to iBasiac, my YouTube channel for all your vacuum cleaner news, views and reviews. Well today we've got a full performance demonstration and review of this Hoover Dust Manager Upright Vacuum Cleaner. Now the Dust Manager was Hoover's first attempt to turn their very popular bagged pure power upright vacuum into a bagless cleaner. Obviously they had more and more competition from Dyson and other manufacturers producing bagless machines. Hoover had to produce their own bagless design as well. Well, all they did basically, they took an existing design, the Pure Power, which is still available now. It's, it's going to become one of the longest running Hoover uprights, maybe of all time, depends how long it still goes on for. But this was the early attempt to produce a bagless unit and a failed attempt, yet another failure for Hoover, because many people who bought this cleaner ended up having it converted to take dust bags. So I'll take you on a brief tour of the machine and then it's on with the performance testing. Looking at the base of the machine we can see that this cleaner has a 2000 watt motor which is not allowed today of course under the new EU regulations. I believe the current Hoover Pure Power is about 700 watts. It has a carpet care control slider here so we've got settings for short pile carpet, medium pile long carpet and hard floors, and finally luxury carpet and cleaning tool mode. To access the bagless compartment we need to press down on this catch at the top of the bag door and remove it and now we can see Hoover's bagless unit. Now this doesn't have any type of cyclonic action, they have improved it somewhat and it now does have a single cyclone. This is a very early attempt, basically they've just replaced a paper bag with a porous plastic box and it just fits on, it just pushes on to the fill tube here. It's got a little seal so basically it fits on just by pushing it like that and that's it. To empty it you have to separate this translucent part from the porous plastic box. Again there's another seal just around the top and then any debris is supposed to be easily tipped into the bin and then your machine is ready to use again. But this plastic box, being porous, it did clog up. You can wash it, you can hand wash it, you can even wash this in the dishwasher. So it will improve its performance once you've given it a thorough wash, but I expect that it will need quite a lot of washings in order to maintain the performance. Underneath we have a little filter, I can just get it out. It's a dual layered filter, there's a black layer and a white layer and that fits at the bottom of the compartment and we'll just pop that back on like that and put the bag door back in place. At the back of the cleaner we can see all the onboard tools and the cord storage. To release the cable we just have to turn down the top hook and the cable comes away in one piece. And then we've got the onboard hose, which according to Hoover is a stair cleaning hose, but during this demonstration I'll see if it does reach up the top of a standard flight of stairs. So apart from the stretch hose, we've got a little dusting brush. We've got a general purpose nozzle for your upholstery and stairs, and that's also got a little brush on it. On this side, we've got an extension tube to enable you to reach up high and low and on the other side we've got Hoover's scabbard crevice tool so that's ideal for doing down the sides of your chairs inside your car but you can also attach the small tools onto the end to give you extra reach and for reaching right up high say you want to get the cobwebs you could pop the dusting brush on and then you've got an extra long reach with both tubes attached together I've just removed the hose from the back of the machine which enables us to have easier access to this exhaust filter. So to access the exhaust filter there's a little catch at the top, we push that down and now we can see Hoover's claimed HEPA filter. And despite the fact that I've used it very very briefly just for a couple of minutes, I think you can see there just about that a lot of dust has passed through the bagless unit straight through into the exhaust vent of the cleaner. Hopefully though 
the HEPA filter has stopped it from coming back into the room. So here we are, a reasonable looking HEPA filter which is needed in this machine. So that just goes into the back there and then we can pop the filter door back there. Before I test the Hoover Dust Manager on an assortment of dirt, I've just put down purely dog hair. Now the black hair is from a long haired Dachshund and the white hair is from a golden retriever. So two types of dog hair. The golden retriever hair especially clings to the carpet because it is a little bit more oilier than my Dachshund's hair. But still, the black hair is stuck to the carpet. I mean, it would take me ages to try and pick this off. So, I'll see if this Hoover cleaner picks all this hair up and it's going to go forward and back through the middle of it. I don't think it's going to clog the bagless unit. That's why I'm doing the test on the pet hair first. And then I'm going to put down some more dirt on this carpet. Then we're going to go into the kitchen, see how it performs on hard floors. And then we're going to see if it will reach up a standard flight of 13 stairs. So, without any further ado, let's fire up this cleaner and see if it's going to make any effect on this hair. That is pretty good. As you can see, a pretty much clean sweep. I'm looking close, it's harder for you to see possibly on camera, but I'm closer to it and you can see it. And the area where it's brushed, it's very, very clean. You'll notice here, this is what I like to call my line of shame. That's a line that's produced by many, many upright vacuum cleaners. And basically that's a line where there is no brushing action because if a vacuum has a belt, Obviously the belt is either at one side of the machine um, or slightly off center. I mean this one's just near the edge but it's not quite on the edge. You can see that's why it's left the line. Some vacuum cleaners have a belt in the middle and it would leave, leave a line of shame in the middle. That doesn't matter under normal circumstances of course because as you're vacuuming you're going to and fro, overlapping the strokes and this sort of thing isn't so noticeable. It's only when you pass the machine slowly back and forth in a straight line where this becomes apparent. Well, I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm going to clean the rest of this hair up and then I'm going to give the Hoover Dust Manager a bit more of a challenging test to do. So, let's get going. I'm pretty pleased with that. I think it should pick up everything else that we can see. <laughs> Regular viewers to iBasiac will know what is in front of you now. This is some of the contents of my bag of filth. Now, I do a lot of vacuum demos, as you may know, and that does produce a lot of dirt. And I do have to save up the dirt in order to produce more dirt for various demonstrations, because my house doesn't get this dirty. So basically, what you can see here in front of you is an awful lot of different types of particles. There's rice in there, there's couscous, there's flour, there's dust. The dog hairs that I picked up earlier, I've put them back down on the carpet. There's carpet fluff, bits of paper, even some larger debris there. I mean, anything that could land on the carpet, I've tried to put in front of this vacuum cleaner. So we're going to give it a real test. I think it's going to struggle with all of this. Um, I think it'll pick it all up, but I think by the time I finish, the Dust Manager bagless box will need a thorough clean because it will probably be all clogged up. But after this, I'm going to still do the demonstration on the hard floor as well. So, in time-honoured tradition, I'm going to pass the Dust Manager on its shortest pile setting through the middle of this dirt, front and back, and we'll evaluate the cleaning results. <laughs> Well, several.
several lines of shame left here. It's not too bad, considering there was a lot of dirt, but obviously, obviously this is the main line that you saw on the demonstration before for the pet hair. This is the thickest line that it's not picked up, but there's also, as you can see, some thinner lines. I'm not sure if you can just see them on camera, but there are some thinner lines here. Obviously it's, it's missed that bit of polystyrene, it's missed that piece of fluff there. But all in all, the places it's cleaned, it is pretty clean. I'm going to, of course, clean all this mess up. I can't leave it like this. And then it'll be on to the kitchen to see how this machine performs on hard floors. Well, as you can see, it took a few passes on some of the dirt, but it has actually cleaned everything up. And I did a little suction test. I took the hose off after I'd finished picking all this up, and there was still a fair bit of suction. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to empty the container. I'm just going to spread some more dirt down on my kitchen floor and see how this Hoover Dust Manager copes with dirt on a hard floor. Well, I've left my pristine living room with its freshly vacuumed carpet and I've come into my kitchen and spread a load of dirt on the kitchen floor in order to test the hard floor cleaning ability of this Hoover Dust Manager. Now, in front of me, I can see rolled oats, rice, couscous and some flour, plus some uh, odd bits of dust and fibres that seem to have managed to get on the kitchen floor from my bag of filth. So instead of using the short pile setting that I used in the living room, I've put the machine on its long carpet setting or hard floor setting. So it's the setting that Hoover suggests in the instruction book. So I'm going to pass the machine forward and back through the middle of this. Now, if past experience is anything to go by, this machine will probably scatter quite a lot of this dirt instead of picking it up. But we can but hope it might perform differently, but I doubt it. Let's go then. There we go, I knew you wouldn't let me down, Hoover. It's, uh, as that song went at Harvest Festival that we used to sing at school, we plough the seeds and scatter. Well, we vac the floor and scatter too with this Hoover. Because it's not just the Hoover cleaner that would do this, it's many upright vacuums that do not have the ability to shut the brush roll off. This scattering is a common problem, I'm afraid. So I don't recommend using an upright vacuum cleaner with a revolving brush on a hard floor, unless it's specifically designed for that purpose. This machine, although it has a hard floor setting, it's left a reasonably clean path, as you can see, but what you might not be able to see, slightly off camera, is a lot of the dirt and dust and debris has been spread out behind the machine. So it's not very good for hard floor cleaning. Well, I'm at the bottom of my stairs now in order to see how far the Hoover Dust Manager will reach up a standard flight of 13 stairs. So I've attached directly onto the handle the stair cleaning upholstery tool, call it what you will. And I'm going to see how far I can reach. Now I could, for extra reach, attach the extension wand as well. But personally, I like to clean stairs with the nozzle directly on the handle. So that's how, how I'm going to test how far this machine will reach up. So with the cleaner safely at the bottom of my stairs, I'm going to see how far up I can go.
So, here at the top, can you still hear me? I'm now at my 11th step here and I can easily clean that. Now, the 12th stair in my home is a half landing and I can easily clean that as well. And had I had a 13th step directly above my half landing, I could easily clean that as well. But my 13th step in this house is actually my landing, which is just around the corner but I could still reach that just about. So as far as stair cleaning goes, it's a very long hose. I didn't have to pull it. It, it didn't uh, feel like it was under too much strain. So all in all, it's pretty good for stair cleaning. When you're using the Hoover Dust Manager for anything but stair cleaning, you need to attach this little stability device to the bottom of the machine on this little hook here. This prevents the machine from toppling over. If you were to tug at the hose, it could quite easily topple over because the hose is quite high up on the machine. So by putting this little clip on the hook at the base of the machine, now when we pull the machine, it should follow us without toppling. Well, that just about ends my demonstration video of the Hoover Dust Manager. Before I go, I want to obviously show you everything it's picked up. I've not emptied the machine since I started the demo, so everything that you've seen me cleaning up is still inside the bin. Well, hopefully most of it, some of it might have escaped through the bin, but we'll be looking at the post motor filter just to see. But I just wanted to see if there is any noticeable loss of suction. So I'm just going to turn it on. <laughs> there is still a considerable amount of suck there. In fact, I don't think it's really lost any suction at all. So that is surprising. It is very surprising, but let's have a look at all the dust that's hopefully trapped inside this blue box. Now, I mean, it's not, the result isn't as bad as I was expecting inside the machine here. It might be hard for me to get the angle right, but there is some dust, obviously, that has passed right through. But it, considering the amount of dirt I picked up, which is more than you know your average amount of cleaning you do in one go, it's retained a lot of the dust. The filter at the bottom has, as you can see, got a little bit. There's some hairs that pass through, but it's not filthy. There is a light uh, covering of dust on there, but nothing major, so quite surprising. And if we turn the machine over and look at the exhaust filter, just see how dirty the air path is. Well, that's the HEPA filter, can't really detect much dirt on that. And if we look inside the compartment, well, again, it's pretty hard to show you because it's black. There's dust in there, but not really much more dust than there was at the start of the demonstration. So, for me, that's pretty surprising. Obviously, if I was to use this machine daily or several times a week, it might eventually start to clog up. But I would hope that washing the filters and washing the dust container would bring the suction back. So all in all, it's not quite as bad as I was expecting. But let's have a look at the dirt that we've picked up. Let's empty the dust box. Okay, let's just remove the top. And obviously, whoops, it all nearly came out then. Obviously that's uh, dusty, but I can rinse that if I want to in water. I don't think you can actually put this part in the dishwasher, but it's easy enough to clean under the tap or hot soapy water. What does it say on here? Please wash monthly, leave to dry for 24 hours. That's referring to the blue dust box, I believe. I personally wouldn't put that in the dishwasher because of the, the rubber seals on it. But as I said, it's easy enough to clean. And here is all the dirt that I picked up during the last demonstration. Doesn't look so much when it's in a pile. But as you can see, it's pretty dusty in here.
there's quite a lot of fine dust on the inside of that which will either need brushing out or washing so if I was to use that again and again it eventually would all clog and then require a more thorough wash so I can't bear to leave this pile of dirt here so to end the video just pop the top of the dust container back on put it back in the machine and then we'll suck up all this dirt using the hose Just as a final flourish, I'll clean up the restover particles here, the leftover particles, should I say, not the restover, I don't know what I'm thinking. Let's just clean the rest of this up and leave a nice clean carpet ready for my next demonstration. clean as a whistle again. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more floor care videos. Until the next time, goodbye and I'll see you soon.